Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be honest and we're gonna talk about money and how I am able to afford luxury goods with my little comparatively minuscule budget. So buckle up, there's gonna be some truth bombs in here. I'm probably going to share more of my business on the internet than I probably should, but it's all for your benefit. So if you're new here, my name's Catherine. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, my, my channel is KW Shops, uh, where we talk about the luxury resale industry. For eight years, I have been working uh, almost full time uh, in the luxury resale industry. Uh, so I've worked with resellers and um, I provide tools and tricks and insights into getting the most out of your luxury goods and in turn getting the most out of your money. So please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to know more. Uh, and by the way, if you are comfortable sharing, um, what are your budgeting tips? How do you afford and save up for luxury? Um, what are some tips that you guys use? Is there anything that you need to work on? Because I definitely feel like I have some lately. Um, but please share those down below in the comments. Uh, I'd love to chat. So this video was inspired by a video that Cassie Thorpe here on YouTube did a while back. I really like the take that she took on this video and I will be sure to link hers down below. Um, she shops more so in the boutique whereas I focus on the resale industry and that's for a variety of reasons but chief among them our budgets are drastically different. So I thought it might be useful to give some of my insights um, being that I'm on the you know less expensive end of the luxury spectrum. Hopefully I can provide some insights into how I do and how you may in turn be able to get a highly coveted and sought after uh, designer handbag. One thing that this channel is never going to lose sight of is that $1,000, $700, $500, $200 is a lot of money to spend on a purse. <laughs> That's something that we will never lose sight of here on this channel. I don't care I, I don't care what happens, what Birkins or whatever are in my future. It's just something that I want to make sure I want to make sure that is inescapably clear that um, so with that let's get started so first we're gonna talk about where the money comes from I have three jobs three that's correct I have one um, like day job basically that's um, me working with the luxury resellers that I work with that's where the money for like, most of my like essential expenses comes from um, but as you can see, I'm here on YouTube. That is my second job, for lack of a better word. A lot of us do make money doing this here on YouTube. Uh, there's a variety of ways. Um, plenty of channels have talked about this. There's uh, like ad revenue, there's affiliate revenue, there's all kinds of just different little streams of money. Sometimes it's $2, sometimes it's $200 that, that come in um, as a result of, um, you know, just things that we do on YouTube. So my third job is modeling professionally. I have modeled professionally since 2010. So we're coming up on, you know, roughly 12 years of, of being a model. And um, that is most of where my bag and luxury goods money comes from um with modeling it's not so much it's never been so much of as of like a like regular steady career for me this is an income stream that's really inconsistent and it's not something that i really that i rely on for my necessities i kind of treat it like because it is effectively like money that falls out of the sky <laughs> to, to a point obviously if it comes in great if it doesn't Fine. It does allow for me to, to make a larger purchase here and there, depending on what is on my wish list for okay, the so My first practical tip is to not be super impulsive, make a wish list and stick to it. So when you see something that you absolutely fall head over heels in love with, don't necessarily reach out and purchase immediately. These are luxury goods. You may miss out on the item and I need to remind you that that is not the end of the world and if you really truly love it then you may come in contact with the item again other thing I want to mention is to not settle on smaller things to placate yourself when it comes to luxury I think in my opinion I think it's better to just take a little bit more time to save up for the item or wait for another one just keep saving the right one will come so for me with big ticket items um, I give myself generally the better part of a year really like decide that I can't live my life without it generally before I take the plunge. This tip has actually gotten away from me recently and is something that I am actively working to get back to um, which is why I recommend it because it was something that really really worked um, for me for a very very long time. Um, I, what I will say though is that what can happen unfortunately and this is one of the downsides of it is that in this time where you're obsessing over the thing and you build the, and you build the item up in your head and put it on such a high pedestal 
sometimes, especially if you haven't been able to see it in person, it may like just not live up to that hype that you like attach to it in your head all this time. Um, I just think that it's better to proceed with caution, be calm and decisive in your purchases. <laughs> hand in hand with that, I have like a number in my head that will make me pause. Now that number is gonna be very different for everyone in every budget, but for me, I have one number for bags, one number for clothing, one number for shoes. Generally for um, most clothing pieces, my, uh, my number is $150. For shoes, the number is like $200, $250. That's why I really, really advocate for the pre-love market because you can actually do a lot with that amount of money and it takes you, it takes you a lot further than in a lot of retail stores. For bags, my number is six or 700. That is my pause number. Share what your pause number is down below. Um, it's like I said, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, for anything over a thousand dollars, I'm definitely like, okay, wait a minute <laughs> when it comes to especially pre-love shopping i believe in fate i believe that there are certain things that come along and the one for you is the one that was supposed to happen <laughs> the right bag or the right item will come along and the moment you see it at least for me is is how i know that i actually want it let the stars align let the item present itself to you um one thing i actually do i also do recommend is um on places like fashion file and the real real you can um add yourself on the wait list for certain items if they're no longer in available in stock on their website especially on fashion file they come back a lot more than it than it may feel like and give yourself pause take take a second to breathe and just know that the right item for you is going to make itself seen when it is time for you to have it to a point this is a method of thought that can get you carried away all of a sudden you think that the cosmos are sending you all of these all of these things that you need to purchase when the opportunity has presented itself and all of a sudden it's presented itself four times in a month I don't think the cosmos works that way <laughs> so still proceed with caution but especially when you are going for like really obscure things like I tend to um, just know that sometimes the right thing comes along and you need to have it but but always caveat to say sometimes you have to tell yourself Catherine no no you just got one last week no if you really really decide that you want it three months from now and it's still available maybe that's the one that's waiting for you if you guys have followed me for a while then you probably know what I'm about to say uh, the next thing that I'm gonna recommend is not chasing trends even though I don't tend to really shop within trend cycles, my recommendation is especially for something that puts a little bit of a lump in your throat when you think about actually going to spend the money on it. And buy it after the hype has subsided a little bit. That way you'll know that you actually love the item and not just the hype. I did this with my Givenchy Mini Antigona. When that bag was at the height of its popularity, it really wasn't even one that I was checking for. Years on, uh, in about 2018 or so, when some of that initial, like, you know, energy around that bag had subsided, was when I really started to look at it and see how useful that would be in my, that it would be in my collection. And now it is one of the bags I am most happy with my, in my entire wardrobe. So give yourself some time. If it's worth spending an amount of money on that feels like a lot for you, then you should plan on having it for a long time. So why the rush? This is one thing that helps me a lot, and I don't know if this is necessarily transferable advice, but it is something, uh, it is an insight that I think is worth sharing. So I work in luxury resale. I'm around bags every single day of my life, but I just can't tell you, like, knowing what it feels like, like, physically when I love something has helped me so much in my own shopping um, escapades. So next up, I like to make sure that I have a list of deal breakers. Um, this was a video that I did not too long ago where I listed off mine. If you have any deal breakers of anything that you are not allowed to purchase or don't want to purchase, um, then comment them down below because I want to hear what yours are. Um, I will leave my video uh, linked in the description box. I know that as much as I you know, love an item, if it has one of these things on this list that I know does not work for me, then I know not to buy it. And, and basically that takes just knowing yourself, knowing your collection, knowing your lifestyle, and kind of just knowing handbags. An obvious thing that I do that impacts my budget, um, I you know use the pre-love market also to sell things. And I think that it is coming up on time for me to do a purge of a couple of bags in my wardrobe. Um, I'm gonna probably need you guys to help me talk through it. <laughs> 
<laughs> to make some decisions on that front. So stay tuned for that video to come in the future. Listen to other people's opinions with only one ear. I do think that some outside opinions can be useful. I think it goes without saying that a sales associate's job is to sell you things. And the sign of a really good one is to tell you when you should not buy something. Anyone, especially in that business, knows and understands that nothing is for everyone. And now for friends and colleagues and family and loved ones, every relationship is different. You know, there are some friends that will tell you you look good in everything and that you should buy absolutely everything. There are other friends who are Debbie Downers. And I think that is really important to know your audience when it does come to bigger ticket purchases. I do definitely have like my Rolodex of people that I can call whose, whose opinions on certain matters like really resonate, re resonate to me in a certain way that those opinions should be weighted in proportion uh, to how valuable and useful you think they are and, you know, take them under consideration. And then you have to be a big girl and decide for yourself. For the most part, I like to shop alone. Given that I have three completely distinct streams of income, part of the reason why my budget doesn't work in a way where I can just, where I really just put money aside in other collections and in other lifestyles, you know, maybe you have a contact with a sales associate at Saks or Neiman's or whatever, and you know that there's a certain day that whatever thing you saw on the runway is gonna drop. It doesn't exactly work like that on the pre-love market. You never really know when, when your dream item is just going to present itself to you. And the kicker is if you don't purchase right then and there, you don't know when the item is going to come back. So, <laughs> Uh, well, the pre-love market definitely, at least for me and the brands and types of things that I shop for, definitely saves money. It is not the easiest route to take necessarily, especially if you are looking for very specific items. Because of the way my income streams are set up, there are times when I know that money is in the pipeline um, where I am more like comfortable with making a purchase, making certain purchases. But that is to say that um, what I do like to check for um, with the retailers and business businesses that I shop with um, is if they have flexible payment options. There's a way to reserve the item with a deposit or, or just generally break the break the payments up into smaller increments. Um, I happen to really like the one for Fashion File. I think it's really easy and straightforward. And now this layaway option and um, is doubly true of smaller resale businesses. A lot of these smaller businesses are dying uh, to make the sale and get you the item that you would wish to purchase. Most of them are more than willing and happy to accommodate you. So definitely reach out to them. So now that brings me to Affirm. I did a video where I talked about my experience with Affirm. I have tried it. Neutrally, I, I will say that Affirm is a tool just like any other. Um, I think that it serves a purpose and it can be useful in a variety of circumstances. Um, I've used it twice so far and I've been really happy with it. I've managed to stay on top of it and I'm gonna do a detailed update review on, but it is something to remember to use responsibly and with foresight. And as I mentioned, because I do have so many streams of income, I kind of have an idea as to what my, you know, next month or next couple of months will look like budget wise. And that'll, that'll just put me in a different like headspace with my spending. Something huge is coming down the pipeline in six weeks, then that puts me in a different place than, it, than if nothing were coming at all. We'll talk more about Affirm in a dedicated video for it, um, but it is an option that's out there and it is one that I have used personally. Some brands I do feel like sort of have price themselves out of my reach um, for my current lifestyle and tastes and needs and budget. And instead of like thinking about how, thinking about the price of the item and whether or not it's overpriced, what it makes me do is just, it makes me reconsider how much I actually want the item itself. Now let me explain. When it comes to luxury, in a weird and very specific way, Price is not necessarily the deterrent for me because I work in the industry and I understand the market. I am just very familiar and acquainted with what the item's actual value is. Um, to me, the actual value of an item is the amount of money that a group of people 
are willing to pay for it. So I have watched the, tra the trajectory of what people are willing to pay, for example, for Chanel bags on the resale market. And I understand that this is what the market is dictating at this time. And I can decide if I would like to participate in that or not. But my mindset is generally, if the item is worth more than I'm willing to shell out, um, Maybe I don't want it enough because I feel like if I did want it enough, then I would just set my goal for that. If I'm not willing to set my goal to meet what is required to purchase this item, then maybe I just don't want it that badly. But once you start getting down that thought process, it really kind of answers your question for you. So now for everything that I do add to my wardrobe, I feel like is extra. And one thing that I'm struggling with is now that my needs actually are met shopping with intention is at least right now in this moment starting to feel a little bit difficult because i'm sort of just adding things because i want them and love them as opposed to actually addressing a need that has not been met and and i spent a couple of years really not liking anything that was coming out while also not feeling like I needed anything. Uh, so, you know, time has gone by and I just think that now I'm at a place where I am re refreshing my collection a bit. Now that I've added a couple of things, Van Island is on the horizon. Just know that like, you know, it comes in waves and it, as long as you're able to make decisions responsibly and work within your means and budget, making good rational choices and, you know, being as intentional as possible and not too impulsive, then I really don't see a ton of harm in it. Um, it just, it, it is what it is right now. <laughs> My updated uh, handbag collection video that I just did a couple of weeks ago. If we want to be, if I want to tell you a secret, it's already out of date. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope that my budget and budgeting tips were useful for you. Um, I know that most of you guys watching um, regard luxury probably close to the same way that I do. Like it's kind of, it's a big deal when we make a purchase. And I just want you to know that having the things that you want to have can be attainable and also done responsibly. I hope that uh, this information and these tips were useful. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to comment them down below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.